Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel The Code Studio. So in the last video we we'll learned how to create a database, delete a database and create a table using the create table SQL command. Now with this understanding in mind let us now look at how data is added inside the table that we have created in the last video. So for that we'll use insert into command and the syntax of this command is as follow. We write insert into then the table name then within the brackets we may specify the name of the columns specifying column names is optional and next come the keyword values after which we specify the values to be inserted in the record now if the column names are not specified the values will be entered in the order of columns so now if i go to my table in pg admin and see the columns i'll open the table You can see customer ID, first name, last name, age, email ID. This is the order of our columns. If the value we are entering have some missing attribute, for example, if there is age or last name missing, then we need to specify the column names after the table name. Or if the values are in different order, we will need to specify the column names in that particular order. So let us look at the examples of insert into command. If you want to insert a single row without mentioning the column name, this is how we do it. We write insert into table name, which is customer table, and then the values which will have customer ID, first name, last name, and email ID of that particular customer. So now let us go to the PG admin. Now I will start typing insert into command. Like insert into customer table after that we'll write values keyword and within the bracket we'll write the values that will be customer id then our first name last name age Note that for strings you need to import the data within single quotes. For numeric integers you do not need to do the same. And then we'll write our email ID which is rf at the rate xyz dot com. Now select this command and run it. You can see our query has written successfully. Now if you want to see that whether this data has been entered to our particular table then just right click on that table and click on view data and click on all rows now here you can see we had successfully entered our data in our customers table so this is the graphical way of viewing your data as you can see in our above panel, we are having the SQL query to view the data. We will discuss this select command later. Now let's go back to our presentation where we will look at the second example. Suppose in the next entry we do not have the customer's last name. Now if we do not mention the column's name, age of the customer will then be filled in the last name as that particular field of last name was missing in that record. So, to avoid this error, we need to mention the column names after the table name. So, you can see we have mentioned the customer ID, first name, age and email ID as the columns in which value is to be filled. Then we give the values. So, now let's toggle back to our PG admin. Now, we will run this query. So, now we'll type. Now, here we will write our insert into statement. So, we'll write. And then mention the four values which will be customer ID of who, name, B, 
page 18, let me say 21, and email ID. Mm -hmm. What? Form. Now select this command and run it. Okay, I have not tried. So this command was also executed successfully. So now go to the table, right click and select our view data and select all rows. Now here you can see that for last name the value is null. In the last lecture we also discussed that there is a constraint called not null. Had there been a constraint on last name of it being not null, then this particular query would have given us an error. Now, let's go back to our example and learn how to insert more than one record at the same time with just one query. Now, to add multiple rows at the same time, we just need to list down all the records separated by a comma. This comma and write this also in PG admin window. Now, you know the syntax, so try to beat me in writing this query. Let's get started. Insert and go. Now select this syntax and run it. As you can see, we have returned our query successfully. So let us go back to the table and check the data. So let us go back to our table to check whether the data has been entered or not. So here as you can see, all our four queries has been added successfully. Well, there is another way to add data to tables. Now sometimes data we want to have in the table is to be imported from a text file or a CSV file. You may encounter this situation less number of times. But nevertheless, it is important to know we will be learning how to copy a data from a file into a table using the copy command in our next video. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video.